Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome, everybody. I want to talk to you guys today about the gospel, the message um, of God's salvation, of God's grace, of Jesus Christ. What does that teach us to do as believers? So let's find out. Let's talk about it, all right? Titus <clears throat> chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. That's what we're going to um, get into today, okay? So, so get your Bibles ready with Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. Um, what's up, baby? I see my wife is on here. She joined us on the live right now. What's up, baby? Good to see you. So let's get into Titus 2, 11 through 14 and, uh, and talk about it, okay? Let's just wait for some more people to jump on here and, uh, and we can get started. How's everybody doing? How are you guys doing today? You guys doing all right? Everybody doing good? All right. So I see we have a few people joining on here. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it, guys. What does the gospel teach us to do? So, <clears throat> hey, Robert. Good to see you, Robert, on here. Robert Britt is on here. Bless you. Bless everybody. Welcome, guys. Let's talk about it. Let's grow. Let's grow in Christ. Uh, West Stanley Christian Ministries. Okay. Awesome. 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 I know we were uh, we were there. My wife and I were there a couple months ago. Um, so let's talk about it. All right. So the gospel, right? The salvation. Let's see what it says. Let's go to uh, Titus 2, 11. So it says, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, right? So, th so this is the grace of God it's talking about, right? Um, if, if, if you read through the New Testament and uh, uh, you try to find what the gospel is, what, what the gospel is even called, you know, a lot of people say that the gospel we're supposed to be preaching as the gospel of the kingdom, right? Because we see Jesus preach the gospel of the kingdom. We see John the Baptist preached about the kingdom of God being at hand um, and all that, right? But all over the New Testament, we see different um, terminology um, for the gospel. We know the gospel means the good news, right? The glad tidings, right? Um, we see uh, the gospel being referred to as the gospel of God, right? Uh, we see the gospel being um, referred to as the gospel of Jesus Christ, um, as the gospel of grace, um, as the gospel of salvation, um, as the gospel of the kingdom of God, right? Uh, we see the gospel being 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 named a lot of things, uh, but we know it's the same good news about the same God um, sending the necessary sacrifice um, to save humanity. Uh, right? It says that He became flesh. Right? That He came to His own, um, and He dwelt among us. He became flesh. Right? And we know that He died for us. And um, he resurrected on the third day and, uh, you know, he just completed everything he, he needed to complete um, to be able to shed his blood, to be able to, you know, become sin and condemn sin in the flesh, right? Redeem us from the curse um, and, and then offer his blood on the mercy seat in God's temple, which is in heaven. The Bible says that God's temple is not anything that human hands have ever made or built. The Bible says that God's temple is something that only he has built. And, and it specifically says that his temple um, is in heaven and on the mercy seat, the real mercy seat, the, 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 the real one that God basically um, gave Moses uh, instructions on how to follow you know, the, the, the example of the real one, but the one Moses built wasn't the real temp, uh, um, or, or, or the one that, uh, that, um, that, uh, God talked to Moses about in, 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 in all the insides and, and, and everything in there and all the sacrificial stuff. And then, and then, you know, David and all that, 
that's not that wasn't the real the real temple of God. The real temple of God has always been in heaven, right? He just gave he just gave his people the 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 the, the instructions right of how to follow the the model which is in heaven. So we know that Jesus took his blood. The Bible says to the mercy seat, which is in God's temple, real temple in heaven. Now, we also know that God has poured out his spirit and sent his spirit to believers, to fill believers, to help believers walk, um, to help believers uh, preach, right? To help believers um, walk in the spirit and, and, and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill his lust. Um, so, so God with us and, and also God in us, right? The spirit of God. So now our bodies are his temple because his presence fills it, right? So we also know that our bodies are also his temples and he's with us, right? So, so this is powerful, right? It's, the Bible says Christ in us. The, you know, that's the mystery. That's the beauty. That's powerful. Christ in us. Right. So so we have those things going on. Right. Jesus died. He resurrected, took his blood to the to the mercy seat um, to be our mediator. Right. To intercede for us so that when, when we come to God. Right. When we come to God in faith, when we come to God in repentance. Right. We can receive the forgiveness of sins. We can receive the mercy of God. Right. Because of the blood of Jesus on the mercy seat. <clears throat> so that's that's powerful, right? That's the gospel of grace. Meaning grace is basically you receiving something good, some type of favor from God that you didn't work for, that you didn't earn, that you didn't basically put the work in for to receive some type of wage, some type of um, payment for it, right? If you receive something good because you worked for it, that's not grace. That's a payment for your real work. If you receive something you didn't work for, now that's grace, right? That's a gift. Grace is a gift from God. Amen? I hope we're following. I hope we're following here. So now we have this grace of God, right? But what is this grace of God all about? You know, a lot of people say, we're, you know, we're, we're only supposed to be focused on the positive things. We're only supposed to be focused on Jesus's work, what Jesus did, the finished work. A lot of people say, hey, we're always going to mess up. We're always going to be sinners. We might as well stop. Just stop trying to get it right. Stop trying to live right. We couldn't do it before we got saved. Why can we do it now that we're saved and we know that we're sinners? It doesn't make sense, right? One day in heaven, we'll be able to live right. But as of right now on earth, we can live right. We're just sinful and evil, right? So we have a lot of different um, perspectives and opinions about the gospel and about how it's supposed to affect us and what it actually teaches us to do. Well, we're going to get into Titus 2. And Titus 2 reveals to us that the gospel tells us to do something that the whole New Testament doesn't hide. It's just obvious, right? It's just, it's everywhere. So let's talk about it. So let's, let, let, let's go to it on here. Titus 2, 11, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. So we just talked about that. And then it says, teaching us that, so here it is. This is showing us what the salvation, what the grace, what the gospel, right? of Jesus is teaching us, his children. What does it teach? Teaching us that denying ungodliness, so it teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, right? And that's up here, soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing Okay, let's just stop right there of, of, of Jesus. We, we, we know it, 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 the appearing of, of the Lord, right? So let's just stop right there. So before we continue reading, we're going to do Titus 2, 11 through 14. But before we finish that text, I, I know you guys see something here. And we don't really talk about it much. We talk about being saved by grace, being saved by the work that God did, something we didn't work for and earn. It's a gift. It's grace. We did not earn it. We did not work for it. However, we very rarely talk about 
now that we're saved, what does this salvation, what does this grace tell us, teach us to do? What are we commanded to do in Christ? It says, denying ungodliness, right? The Bible says, walk according to the spirit, not according to the flesh, making no provision for the flesh to fulfill his lust, right? The Bible says, practice righteousness, walk in the light. It says, denying ungodliness and worldly lust, right? Of course, the word, the, the, the Lord doesn't want us to live like the world, right? He, he reminds us, hey, you're citizens of, of heaven. He reminds us, hey, set your mind on the things of the spirit, not on the things of the earth. He reminds us, hey, be spiritually minded, walk in the spirit. He reminds us, hey, your body is not my temple because you have the Holy Spirit. You've been born again. You are my son. You are my daughter. Be imitators of your father. Be imitators of God. Be holy in conduct as your God in heaven is holy. The Bible, it says it all over the place, right? It, he doesn't want us to live like the world because we're no longer of the world and we have been filled with his spirit and we are now supposed to be the light of the world. So the light of the world, it's just clear and obvious. Something is supposed to be one, you know, a hundred, 80 degrees completely different from the world. So we're supposed to stand out, right? Darkness and light do not mix, mingle, intertwine, none of that. So this is just confirming all the other scriptures that we already know. Now, I'm not sure how you've been receiving and embracing these scriptures, but but, but Titus 2, 11 through 14 is, is, is doing some good and reminding us that, hey, this is what the gospel is all about. This is what the grace of God is teaching us. Paul said it plain and clear. The, the, the grace of God is not for us to just live like the old us or excuse our bad fruit or, or, or think that God doesn't even see our sin or will not judge our sin. Like the gospel of grace doesn't put us in denial of reality of our works, of our fruit, of our life. It's supposed to empower us. It saves us, but it empowers us. It enables us to live like Christ. I mean, we're not called followers of Christ for no reason. <laughs> if, if, if you told me you were a follower, or in other words, a student, or in other words, a disciple, or in other words, an imitator of LeBron James, I would expect, not a fan, a follower, meaning a student. If you told me you were a student of LeBron James, I expect you to wake up at five o'clock in the morning, go to the gym, do the workouts that LeBron James is doing, right? Go do the training, look at the playbook, do all these different things that he's doing, you know, training multiple times a day, weightlifting, cardio, playbook, this, the watching tapes, exercising, you know, exercising the mind, training, you know, replaying stuff, redoing stuff, retrying stuff, working on his mistake. I expect you to live the same kind of lifestyle as LeBron James if you tell me you are a student and disciple of LeBron James. So let's just remember what Christianity is all about. It's not a confession to get to heaven and listen to Christian music on the way to our church service once a week and then the rest of the week we're just living for us. That's not the gospel. That's not Christianity. Christianity is being a student of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, the Bible says, did the will of the Father walk in the spirit. Amen. Let's just stop right there and pause right there because I see a couple comments. What's up, Israel? I see Israel is on here. Love you, bro. Glad you joined. What's up, Isaiah? I see Isaiah is on here. Glad you guys joined. Let's see. Brit. Let's see what Brit said. Brit said, amen. Yeah, I mean... A lot of times we just forget what, you know, what the point of all this is. What's up, Michelle? Love you guys. Welcome, guys. Thanks for joining. I said, uh, I said seven o'clock and I think I joined uh, a few minutes after, but it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> hey, Gloria. Hola, ma. Como estas? Como estas? Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody. So let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh oh, I'm trying to look at the comments here. Uh, let me see. Okay, all right. So, yeah, I mean that's that, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about, guys. So Robert Britt said, 
Works does not produce salvation, but salvation does produce works. Bear fruit. He not now he, what he just said is is powerful. Like what he just said is boom. It's, it's a knockout punch right there um, to deceit and to lies. Amen. We, we need to. We, yeah, yeah. We need to meet um, Robert. We'll we'll head out there one day again. I know we we went a couple months ago, um, but we need to we we need to meet. We'll get hooked up for sure. Yes, sir. So let me repeat what Robert said. Works does not produce salvation. Let's stop right there. So we understand that the things that we did did not get us saved, right? I mean, I think it's obvious. I mean, a lot of us were promiscuous. A lot of us were angry, wrathful. A lot of us, um, maybe homosexual, um, you know, fornicators, um, you know, wherever we were, whatever sin we were living in, because we were all, we have all lived in sin. You know, the Bible declares, declares that straight up. So we know that when we got saved is because we, we were convicted by the Lord. We heard the message or we read the message and the Lord convicted us when we were reading, you know, either, either or. And we said, man, you know what? I've been living against God. I'm starting to believe God is real. I'm starting to believe like God is watching me right now and he's not too happy with me and he's going to judge me one day. And I'm starting to believe that there's a punishment for those who live against God. So, man, let me, I, I, I don't want to live like this no more. And I know I need God's forgiveness. And then that's when we started talking to God, right? That's when we started confessing right? in Romans, it, confessing, right? But the confessing, confession comes because faith comes first in our hearts. It says you believe in your heart and then you confess with your mouth, right? Because when you believe in somebody, you're going to start talking to them. If you believe in God, guess what? Now you're going to start thinking about him judging you or about his judgment or about, his, you know, now you're going to start to develop a fear of the Lord if you start believing in him. So faith always comes first. When somebody gets saved, confession didn't come first. Faith came, sir. Uh, faith came first, right? So they believed and they're like, oh man, God, I'm starting to believe God is real. If he's real, you know, I need to tie it up. I need to get right with him. If he's real, he's going to judge me. So, so a, fee, a fear of the Lord develops, right? A need for repentance develops. And then we confess and we start talk, talking to him. We start, you know, talking to Jesus as he is Lord, as, as he's God, right? We end up getting baptized and all that stuff. So we get saved knowing that we needed salvation because of our bad works, not our good works, our bad works. So I think it's, you know, I think it's clean and cl uh, plain and clear that we don't get saved by our good works. However, when we get saved, the Bible says we, we died with Christ. We were buried with Christ. We were crucified with Christ. And it says we were raised unto life to bear good fruit unto God. So now we've been born again, not to live for ourselves, but actually to live for God. Okay. So, 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 so there it is right there. Not saved by good works, saved from bad works, saved to good works. Okay. Why? Let's go back to what I was saying. We are followers of Jesus. The Bible says he went about doing good. The Bible says that Everything he did, he did because he saw the Father do it. Everything he spoke, he heard the Father. He was spirit-led. He said, if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, the kingdom of God. Has... So he manifested the kingdom, right? The Bible says that he was full of grace and truth. The Bible says he never sinned. The Bible says he fulfilled all righteousness. The Bible says that he was good. Like, Jesus lived in a way that pleased the Father. That's when the Father said, listen, behold, my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Well, what pleased the father? The fact that the son was living for the father, doing the will of the father. Even when Jesus taught his disciples how to pray, he said, Father, your will be done. Your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Everything that Jesus said, everything that Jesus did was for the will of God to be done, was to please the father. Amen. So let's go back to Titus 2 and let's read that again. Titus 2 verse 11. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that, uh oh, so this is what the grace of God teaches us. This is what the gospel teaches us. Teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, 
We should live soberly, right? Soberly. We, we should be in reality. We should, we should know what we're doing. We should be able to have self-control. That's what soberly means, right? The opposite of drunk, the opposite of sleep, the opposite of, of deceived and confused and manipulated and controlled. That's to be sober, to know what you're doing and to do what you will to do, right? To do what you will to do. Not to do what your flesh wants you to do, like Paul was saying in Romans 7, but to do what your spirit wants to do, to do what your mind wants to do. Your mind wants to do the will of God, so your mind is going to want to do the will of God and set his and, and, and set on the will of God, and is going to submit to the spirit so that you can do the will of God. What Paul taught then, Romans 8, right? So don't stop at Romans 7 and say, oh, I stand no chance against the flesh. No, read Romans 8, and then read also Galatians. It talks about the spirit and the flesh being enemies contrary to one another, not doing what each other wants to do. But guess what? It says, if you set your mind on the things of the spirit, you will be able to do the things that the spirit wants to do. You will be able to walk according to the spirit. So there is is a victory. There is a promise if we just fix our thoughts. Amen. So it says denying ungodliness, denying worldly lust. We should live soberly, awake, not drunk, soberly, not in darkness, soberly in the day, in the light. The Bible calls us children of the light, light in the Lord. That's why it says walk in the light. It says light exposes darkness. Come on. How could you expose darkness, which is what the Bible tells us to do, if you're walking in it? There's a mix. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. We should live soberly. We should live righteously. Oh, so righteousness is not only an idea. I'm righteous. I'm righteous. I'm No, no, no. Are you living righteously? You see what it says right there? Titus 2. Live righteously. That's what the Bible says. Practice righteousness. That's why the Bible mentions the righteous acts of the saints. <laughs> righteousness is the same. The world knows what righteousness is. When you tell the world somebody's righteous, they expect somebody who's living righteously. They expect somebody who's bearing good fruit. You know, it's what uh, it's when we get into a lot of a lot of you know confusing mixed doctrine that are mixed with the that with that is mixed with the doctrines of man that we start to think righteousness is not acts righteousness is just a confession righteousness is just a, a state of mind it's an attitude no live it says we should live soberly we should live righteously and godly <laughs> and godly in the present age stop right there how many times have you heard believers say i'm not going to get it right here I'm not going to be able to put those, 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 those drinks down. I'm not going to be able to stop having sex with my girlfriend. I'm not going to be able to put that weed down here while I'm on earth. I'm going to be able to see Jesus saved me from my sins so that I could go to heaven. So when I get to heaven, that's when I'm going to live righteously. Okay, Nick? Wrong doctrine. Uh uh uh. You've been deceived, Mr. and Mrs. Whoever it is that's saying that you've been deceived. You've been taught wrong doctrine from fleshy preachers and fleshy people that want to do fleshy things and they're going to receive their fleshy reward one day. So don't follow them. They're leading the blind. Okay, stop. The Bible says to live righteously and godly in the present age. Present age means right now, not when you get to heaven, not when you get to the kingdom. Y'all listening? Godly and righteously in the present age. That's 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 completely going against what we've been taught. We've been taught one day when I get to heaven, I'm going to be able to stop doing all the sins that have me bound. But the gospel teaches us, hey, you are free and you've been filled with the spirit that wants to do the opposite of your flesh. That does not want to lead you in ungodliness, unrighteousness, sinfulness, but actually freedom from those things. That's why Romans says you've been what you've been delivered from the slavery of sin and now you can master. Master sin by the Holy Spirit. Sin shall no longer have dominion over you. That's what it's saying, right? So now you can live soberly through the gospel. Now you can live righteously through the gospel. Now you can live as a godly person through the gospel when? In this present age. And then it says, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Wow. And that's, that's another confirmation of what I just said. 
<laughs> if you're looking for the return of the Lord, if you're looking for God's coming, then it's obviously still still referring to the you that's still on earth with this sinful flesh. <laughs> if you're, if it's saying you're going to be looking, you should be waiting for the return of the Lord. You should be excited and hopeful for his return, his glorious return. Then it's obviously referring to us living soberly, godly, and righteously while we are still on this earth before the return of the Lord. How can you argue with that? Man, if, 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 if this is blessing you, please press, press the like button. Please press the um, share button so that your friends and family who might be stuck in some incorrect teaching or some carnal desires can, can maybe receive some freedom today. Okay, Raul, bless you, man. Thank you, Jesus. That's his grace. That's his real grace. That's what his real grace teaches us. Israel said freedom. That's right, bro. Facts, as Isaiah said. Truth, amen, Michelle said. Come on, man. Come on, guys. Let's go, man. Let's uh, listen. If, if if we don't keep our eyes on the truth, our expectancy is, is, is gonna decrease. If, if we don't keep our eyes on the truth, our minds on the truth, our, our, our fear of the Lord is gonna decrease. Our, our reverence to God, our our, our 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 desire to please Him, our awareness that He will judge all people one day will decrease. We gotta make sure we're we're focused on the fact that He is God and not us. That he is judge and not us. That he has all authority and that he's going to be the one who says, go to the right, go to the... Remember, he said his angels were going to come and gather and gather and gather the harvest and then they're going to pick them out. And some are going to go here and some are going to get burned. Like if that doesn't give you a desire to want to please God and live according to the true gospel of grace... Then you know I I I I don't know what will. We gotta remember who God is. We're miniature, we're ants, we're nothing compared to him. He he made all this stuff. He made all this stuff, guys. <laughs> like, this is God. You know, yesterday, yesterday my wife, my wife and I noticed that one of our dogs were limping. And <laughs> I'm like, oh no, <laughs> you know, this, this can't be, this is our baby. You know, so so I went to our dog and I started praying for her for her leg because she was limping. She was obviously hurt. So so in my mind, you know, as I'm praying, like I usually do for for for, for healing, right? Just like Jesus did, right? Just like Stephen and Philip and Paul and Peter and James and John did, right? Um, <laughs> all I, I stopped myself and all I thought about was this: was God is the Creator. He created the heavens. And everything that is in them, the earth and everything that is in it, the seas and everything that is in them. He created all things, the sun, the moon, the star, everything. He created all people. He created all creatures. He created my dog, right? That's what I was, I was thinking about. I was like, God, and do I have peace with God? Yeah. Is God my father? Yeah. Does Jesus have all authority in heaven and on earth? Yeah. Did Jesus tell me I can heal the sick as his disciple, as his student? Yeah. Did Jesus say I was redeemed from the curse of the law? Yeah. Oh, okay. Be healed in Jesus' name. So the whole time I'm praying for healing, I have the creator in mind because he's the powerful one. He's the mighty one. He is able to heal. He wants to heal, right? When you have peace with God, Right when, when when grace has come and righteousness has taken over, righteousness, right, good doing, peace with God brings healing, just like enmity with God, unrighteousness, right, disobedience brought the curse, right, brought sickness, right. It's, it's the opposite. So we always got to keep in mind the powerful God that we have, the Creator. He created everything. Is he not able? So in the same way, we should not only use that to, to exercise faith, right? When somebody needs healing or something like that, we should use that to exercise a fear of the Lord, a respect for the Lord, a reverence to the fact that he's watching us and that one day he will judge all people according to their works. The Bible says, you know, I'm not trying to argue about that. He says, it says all people. And it says, according to their works. <laughs> they don't say according to their confession. Come on, works, not confession. Works, not con We know how we got saved, not by our works, by his works, by grace. It was a gift to us from him. 
But we know it says continue in the faith. And we know it says that we are soldiers and we are meant to do good works and bear good fruit to God. You guys hear that? The Bible says that Jesus <laughs> said, one day, many will come to me. He's, prom he's declaring, many will come to me and will say, Lord, the confession, right? Haven't I prophesied? Haven't I worked miracles? Haven't I done all these things in your name? Ministry. So now we have the Lord saying that people who, who, who confess him, who call him Lord and King and Jesus and God and all this, and people who do ministry, even miraculous, prophetic, supernatural ministry, will come to him in the end. And he's going to say to them, we all know the verse. We all know what he's going to say. He's going to say to them, depart from you. I never knew you. And, and, and what, what else? Depart from me. I never knew you. You doer or worker of iniquity. <laughs> so what was he judging those ministers and those confessors of Jesus by? Their confession? Their nice ministry? No. He was judging them according to their works. He says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. You doers of iniquity. <laughs> so we gotta, we gotta be so, we gotta sober up, guys, and realize that there needs to be a change. We need to be transformed, guys. You know, if the gospel we believe in and the grace we're so thankful to God for isn't transforming us, isn't renewing our minds and helping us bear better fruit and let go of our old ways, of our old habits, of our old desires and sins, then there's something disconnected. There's something missing there. We have to be hungry for growth. Let's grow. Amen. So let's finish this verse. So it says, soberly, righteously, godly in this age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us. So we know we're supposed to be hopeful for the Lord's return, right? And he's the Lord who gave himself for us. He laid down his life for us. He died for us, right? But check this out, y'all. Check this out. That, you know, when the Bible says that, it means because. It means so that, right? It says he gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed. If you know what lawless deed means, you know it means sin. In 1 John, it says lawlessness is sin. We, we know that. And we know that the Lord came to destroy the works of the of, 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 of the works of the devil and the context there were what was sin and lawless deeds, right? Sinful and lawless deeds. That's, that's what, G, that's why Jesus died to destroy the work of the devil. Sinfulness, disobedience to God. It started with Eve, right? All we got to do is read the first three chapters of Genesis and realize why Jesus came. Amen. <laughs> he came because he loved us, but he, he, he came because he, he saw that we were what? In bondage to sin, right? Under the bondage of corruption, right? We were enemies of God, not at peace with God. We were under the curse. We were what? Just mere flesh, sinful flesh committing sin. And we were going to receive the wages of our sin. We know the wages of sin is death. Jesus didn't want that for us. So he came and he gave us the ability, opportunity to believe in him to be redeemed, right? So it says he came, right? So that he might redeem us from every lawless deed, sin, right? So, so, so why would he be okay with us living that again? Hmm. If he went through all of that, because of sin, why would he be okay with us living in it again? Hmm. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't add up. It says for this very purpose and reason, he came to destroy the works of the devil, which was sin, right? So it says he came to redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself, his own special people, the church, right? The anointed ones, right? The called out ones, the separate ones, the holy ones, the ones that are not like the world. That's the church. That's the body of Christ, okay? To And purify for himself his own special people. Own special people? Oh, oh, I feel good now. That's the type of word I like to hear. That's the type of prophecy I like to hear. I like to be called special and unique and lovely and beautiful, right? So, 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 so. Why are we supposed to be special? Why are we supposed to be different? Why are we supposed to stand out? Let me finish the verse. It says, 
his own special people, comma, zealous for good works. His people, why special, why? Zealous for good works. So what's the church supposed to look like? What does the gospel of grace teach us to do? <laughs> to be people who are hungry and passionate and zealous and, and, and full of a desire to do good works for God because we love God, because we've been born again, because he so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son to deliver us, right? That we might have life and not perish. Why? So that we might be raised and live for God, bear fruit to God, so that we may be able to please God. The Bible says, I'm not here. Apostle Paul said, I'm not here to please man. I'm here to please God. Well, how do you please God? It's showing us he wants us to be people that are zealous for for good works. So what does the gospel teach us? To put aside, to reject, to deny ungodliness, to deny worldly lust, to live soberly, to live righteously, to live godly in this present age, to hope for the Lord, to be expected and anticipated of his return, right? Because he gave himself for us. He redeemed us from sin and he wants to purify us to himself as a special people who do good works. So the, the God gospel of grace. Grace, it teaches us to be people of good works. That's the gospel. That's the outcome that God had in mind when he sent Jesus. That's the outcome and that's the result and the effects and the fruit that God had in mind when he said, I need to deliver people. I created these people. I want them free from the works of the devil. The devil crept in and he deceived Eve. And because of that, they mankind reproduced and every man that was reproduced, every little boy, little girl that was reproduced through Adam and Eve reproduced, were reproduced as fallen, as sinners, as those at enmity with God, as those who have a mind contrary to my spirit. And God did a whole bunch of stuff from Genesis all the way to the book of Matthew when he sent Jesus and God came himself as man, as his own creation to deliver us from these bad works, right? It says the lawlessness, the, 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 the sinfulness, right? So that we can be born again, be forgiven of our sins, receive his spirit and do what? Do good works unto him, for him. Amen. So that's what the gospel teaches, guys. Like it teaches us to, that's why it says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. We're supposed to think of ourselves as new. Right, I've never existed before as Nick Acosta with the Holy Spirit within. That has never been an existent a creature before. This is the first time that Nick Acosta has had the Holy Spirit within joined with his human spirit. So I am a new creation. So if I'm a new creation with, with a new potential, because the Holy Spirit brings a new potential, the Bible says, uh, Jesus said, yeah, the flesh is weak. But Jesus said, the spirit is willing, the spirit is strong, the spirit is able, right? So, of course, my potential has changed now that the spirit is inside. So, if my potential to bear good fruit has changed, I'm supposed to be bearing good fruit now. There's supposed to be different type of works now. The Bible calls it, calls it fruit, fruit to repentance, right? <laughs> the Bible calls it being a doer of the word of God and not a hearer only. Because when we're only hearers, we deceive ourselves. We trick ourselves. Meaning we're just lying to ourselves and being hypocrites. But there, but there's there's the, a good news. There's the good news of grace, of God's grace for us today. And that good news is telling us, hey, this is your destiny. This is your calling in Christ Jesus. For you to leave the old you behind. For you to reject and deny all that ungodliness, all that unrighteousness that used to have you bound. For you to think differently and be sober, right? For you to, you know, Jesus said, be watchful and pray. The Bible says, be sober. The Bible says, be spiritually minded. Seek those things which are above what Christ is at the right. Like it always talks about our mind. It says that the new man is, is renewed in knowledge. It says that transformation comes by the renewing of the mind. So it's always telling us to have a good state of mind, to be sober, to be focused on the, on the truth of God, on the ways of God. How many times does the prophet David talk about meditating on the word of God? There's a whole, a whole song. It's like, you know, like over a hundred verses long dedicated to the word of God. You know, the word of God is my light, right? It's a, it, it, it's a, it's a path unto me. 
is a light unto me, is a lamp unto me, unto my path, right? So there's always this contrast, this separation, division, and, 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 and distinction between light and darkness, between righteousness and unrighteousness, between truth and deceit. Why? Because our works are supposed to be different. Why? Because we ourselves are different. And that's the good news. That's the gospel. Amen. I hope this word uh, helped you guys understand, um, you know, what the gospel is all about, what the gospel teaches us a little more, you know, and it helps you get a clearer perspective and understanding of, of why Jesus came. Because a lot of times we get deceived, right? A lot of times we get tricked by um, by by the wrong people, um, by the people that still want to serve their flesh, by the people um, that maybe we just were taught wrong by others before them. Maybe they didn't mean no harm and they were just taught by others. Oh, you know, um, uh, sin doesn't exist no more. Or, oh, um, you know, we're never going to live right um, until the Lord returns and, and God doesn't expect expect us to. And, you know, we, we, I think we've, we've listened to the wrong teachings. I think that's why it's so important that we focus on this, guys, that we focus on this, okay? Because if we don't focus on that, then we won't see these things. See, there's a popularity. There's a pop. There's popular scriptures. There's a popularity message in the body of Christ. Like if you go on Facebook, if you go on YouTube, you go on Instagram, you see the same scriptures being talked about over and over and over again. You see those, right? I'm a new creation. Um, for God so loved the world. Um, you know, you were wonderfully made. You were you were knit in your mother's womb. Um, God's will for you is for good things, right? God has a purpose for you. Um, you know, we, we hear the same scriptures over, over and over again. So if we wait for somebody to teach us, we may never hear the truth and be set free from the deceit or from the power of this flesh. We have to get into the word ourselves because this is Titus 2. <laughs> Who teaches Titus 2? What, what famous scripture, right? Who, who scrolls on Instagram and sees Titus 2 and 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy and the book of Hebrews being quoted and preached about? Like, we don't see that. We see everybody preaching about Moses parting the Red Sea. We see everybody talking about David's sin, like, right? So you have to get into the word yourself because if you don't do it, Chances are you're not going to hear a lot of these scriptures and a lot of these passages that help you understand what the gospel is all about, what real biblical, scriptural, New Testament grace means and empowers us to do. Amen. Yeah, I love Titus, bro. Israel said Titus. I love Titus. Let's go, Isaiah. Let's grow. Let's grow. Let's grow. Let's grow. So. I'm going to put a link here um, on this on this live right now, guys. And basically, this link <coughs> is going to give you the opportunity to sign up for our Tuesday night Bible studies. We have online Bible studies where we read, where we read the word of God together. We talk about the word of God together. And this is anybody. Anybody could join. And it's free. Anybody could join these online Bible studies. We read the word of God together. We have conversations about it about what, we, what we're reading. Like we can even interrupt each other while we're reading and say, hold up, let's talk about this. Hold up, I have a question. Like this is interactive, you know, participation based style uh, Bible study so that we can grow each other, grow with each other and sharpen each other. So these Bible studies on Tuesday nights, every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern time, guys, um, you, you guys could join. So I'm gonna put a link on here so you, you can sign up for these Bible studies. And then once you sign up, I'm going, um, it's going to automatically email you, um, the, the information because it's through Zoom. And you need a meeting code, uh, a meeting ID and a meeting code. So it's going to email you that automatically, uh, for you to be able to enter into the online Bible study. Um, and in case we change the code, we'll email that to you. Um, if we add another day of, for a Bible study, we do an additional one that week, we'll email you about it. Um, if, uh, if there's some pre Bible study reading, Right, some preparation for you to read um, that we're gonna get into. Then we'll send it to you through um, through through email. So, man, I, you know these are awesome. Like we're growing. A lot of us are growing. We we're excited about it. We've been talking about so many good things. So many questions have been answered, um, and there's been a lot of clarification and a lot of powerful truth that sets us free um, on in this Bible study. So sign up for these Bible studies in this link right here. Um, 
is going to is going to be the first thing that pops up online Bible studies. Just click on that and it's free. Just sign up for it. OK, um, on that same link, guys, um, if you guys want to um, support the ministry, support the ministry financially, donate to the ministry through that same link, you can also give. OK, um, and uh, man, I hope I hope a lot of you guys sign up for these Bible studies um, because these are just so beneficial. You know, like I said, if you wait for for somebody to tell you something, for Instagram to, 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 to bring a scripture up to you, for Facebook, for Facebook, somebody on Facebook Live to say things to you. If you wait for that, you, you might be waiting for a long time and it might be at the cost of, 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 of your life, of your fruit, of your mission, of your calling, right? Maybe even your eternity. You know, so, so you got to get into the word and in and, 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 and part of getting into the word, you know, the Bible says gather with the saints, right? It says teach each other, exhort each other, right? Help each other. So these Bible studies are going to do just that. So I, I definitely recommend these. OK, um, Israel said so much growth from the Bible studies. Come on. That's awesome, man. I, I, I love the I love the, um, the the testimonies and I love the. Um, the encouragement and I love the, the confirmation from you guys, man. Isaiah on here, the Bible studies are pure fire. You know, Isaiah, Israel, Michelle, my wife Samantha, um, Kayla, you know, and and, 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 and other people. We we all we we're there every Tuesday night. We're there faithfully every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. And man, we have a great time. You know, a lot of times we think that when we gather with saints, we, you can only you can only have a Gloria, Gloria is all always there too. Um, a lot of people think that when we gather with the saints, you could only have a good time when you're, you know, playing cards or, um, you know, at the basketball game, um, or you know, drinking and and, and doing all these things. And that that you know that's, you know, we, we, we're doing what the Bible tells us to do when we're actually talking about the Lord, when we're actually growing with God together. That's why the Bible tells us to assemble, to come together. Unless we're, we're, you know, we're having the Lord's Supper, unless we're having communion, <laughs> right? Unless we're doing that, we should be growing together. We should be sharpening each other. Men should sharpen men as iron sharpens iron. Like we should be teaching. We should be counseling. We should be praying together for one another. In these Bible studies, we, we read the word. We talk about the word. We answer questions about the word and we pray together. I mean, I, I, I'm, ask them. You know, I, I give you, I give everybody time to, to tell me what you want to pray for. And we'll, we'll pray for it. We'll pray for it together. You know, it don't matter what it is. If it's the world, if it's politics, if it's uh, somebody's body, somebody needs healing, if it's somebody's marriage. You know, we were like, we're the body of Christ. People will get on here and, and you know, and share some personal stuff um, a lot of times. And, and, and we just pray, pray for them with faith, with our whole hearts, because that's what it's about. It's not about gathering and, you know, hearing somebody preach, being impressed by their preaching, you know, being impressed by the worship, clapping, you know, giving a couple dollars and then just going home and really getting on with our lives and eating some wings and watching a football game. Like that's not, that's, that's not what assembling is about. Assembling is about growing together. So I definitely encourage you guys to grow together with us. Um, also, you know, encourage you guys, if, if, if this word helped you, if this word bless you, um, go ahead and um, hit that link. You can give to the ministry. You can help us, support us, um, help us to do all the things we have in mind doing, um, the vision that we have, you know, to, to really preach the gospel to unbelievers um, in the streets, to bring, you know, a real evangelism um, to Charlotte, you know, because I, I know that, that there's a big lack of, there, there's not a lack of churches. There's not a lack of conference conferences. There's a big lack of true evangelism in the city of Charlotte. Amen. There, there, there might not be a lack of giving food to people, of giving blankets to people, of giving money to people and people who need help with their bills. There might not be a lack of that, which is awesome. That's that's great. Um, and we hope to do that, too. But there's a lack of actually focusing on people's eternity and helping people hear the message that is going to help them become right with God which is what all this is about. And, and, and that's our mission. You know, that, that's our mission to really bring the message of Jesus to the city of Charlotte, um, to, to, to help believers who are already believers grow through discipleship, through these Bible studies too, through classes. Um, you know, our mission is to get into the jails. 
Um, I mean, we're, we're already there, uh, but this whole coronavirus is <laughs> kind of, you know, delaying and slowing everything down. But, um, you know, to get into the jails and into the prisons and, and just to do amazing things, it's more than just being, you know, being a preacher. Like, you know, going into a, a conference and preaching and walking out like that's that's, you know, I mean, I guess that's ministry, but ministry is supposed to be a lot dirtier than that. Amen. And, and that's what we're about, you know, new nature ministry. So click that link if you want to support the ministry. And um, I'm done. I'm done. I, you know, I told you about the Bible study. I told you about giving to the ministry. And um, I gave you a message from Titus 2, 11 through 14. If you're just now joining, I'm going to upload. I'm going to upload this to Facebook. You can watch it. Open up Titus 2 and, and get into the word with me. And, um, and I hope this helps you. I hope this blesses you. So I'm done. Um, I'm not sure if anybody has any questions. You guys have any questions? Um, anything, anything you guys want to say? I know Isaiah say I agree. Um, Joanna said amen. Let's see who else is on here. Saints pray together. That's right. We pray together. Amen. Love you guys, man. I'm glad you guys are on here. I'm glad everybody's on here. Who's on here watching? Um, and growing with me, man. That's that's just what I want. I want believers to grow with me, man. It's it, it's hard when um it's hard when 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 somebody tries to grow on their own um, or when somebody keeps things to their own and stuff like that. You know, Jesus always had people with him. You know, even after he he died and resurrected, <laughs> he 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 was showing up to his disciples. They were all together. <laughs> he was showing up to the to the two disciples that were walking on the road. They were together. Right. And they ended up talking about the Lord because he ended up talking with them. And they're like, man, didn't our hearts burn? Like there was something different about this guy. He ended up being the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Let's see. Uh, there is nothing like studying and understanding for yourself. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. It's vital that we get into the word together. As I said, you know, if you don't get into the word yourself, you may not see a lot of powerful, you just powerful, liberating scriptures online, on Instagram, on Facebook. You might not see that. They're not popular. The popular ones are the encouraging, comforting ones, which is cool. We need those too. But we also need the ones that are that are going to tell us how we're supposed to be living what fruit we're supposed to be, but how to walk in the spirit. We also need those scriptures that, that, that remind us that God is God and he will not be mocked or fooled, right? So, so a lot of these scriptures, they're not going to be promoted and they're not going to become popular. So we got to get into the word ourselves. Amen. Um, out that link so you can get the info to the Bible studies. Okay. Oh yeah. If, if, yeah, if you guys want to, if you guys have somebody in mind, if you know somebody that needs these Bible studies or that that's looking for, for somewhere to grow with other believers, send them that link, send them that link or, or, or share this video on your page or, or send them the link because, um, it, with the link, they're able to sign up with their name and email, right? So if I, if we get their name and email, we're able to you know, individually, personally, send them the time, send them the code. So in case you can't make it, they'll still have the code. Um, or uh, if they need to know what we're going to be reading, how to get prepared for the Bible study, then we'll send them that too. Amen. So let's, let's, let, let, let's do that. Let's grow, guys. All right. Unless anybody has any questions or anything like that, I think we're done with this Facebook Live for tonight. I hope everybody's having a good weekend. Hope you guys enjoy your Saturday night and enjoy to, um, your Sunday tomorrow. I know we're going to be um, on Facebook Live with our church um, hearing a message from our pastor. So I'm excited for that. Um, can't wait till we're, till we're able to um, gather <laughs> physically, right? Um, but, but, but if we can't, this is, we're growing. Ain't, ain't nothing stop, stopping us or slowing us down. Amen. You know, a lot of times people have, have no idea what to do once once church is out of the picture, you know, because a lot of people have been taught um, how to be church members, um, but not followers of Jesus. And the Bible doesn't say to become a church member. It, it says follow Jesus, you know, so so we, we got to make sure we're actually anchored and rooted and actually knowing the Lord and keeping his word, following his example and his teachings. Amen. Love you guys. Love you, Israel. Love you, bro. Love you guys. So yeah, we're going to get on, on Facebook Live tomorrow. Check our church out. 
Um, we usually, what we usually have, guys, is we usually have home meetings. If, if you're local here in, in Charlotte, North Carolina, we usually have home meetings every Saturday night at at, um, at, uh, at 630. Um, but because of the virus thing, we stopped having them and we just do online. So today I did a Facebook Live um, but, uh, we usually, we usually have, you know, our zoom Bible studies, um, substituting our home meetings on Saturday nights. And then, and then of course we have our Tuesday night online Bible studies through zoom either way, whether we do it on Saturday or not. So we stay, you know, we stay connected and stay growing. But once this is over, we're going to, we're going to continue having our home meetings every Saturday night. So if you're local, if you're in Charlotte, you know, you, you know, you're more than welcome to reach out to me about that. Um, and see if we can get you hooked up and linked in LinkedIn over here, okay? All right, love you guys. No questions. I love you, Israel. Love you, Isaiah. Thank you guys for joining. And um, again, if you think this is going to bless somebody, share this Share this video. Tell them to get their Bible out and go to Titus 2. And, um, and uh, hopefully this helps somebody, okay? Um, if you want to uh, bless the ministry, help the ministry, give to the ministry, the link is there. If you haven't signed up for our online Bible studies through Zoom, the link is there right now. Click on that link, sign up. It's free and um, and I believe is is going to help you grow. I believe it's very ben beneficial. It's very real. Um, it's very scriptural. <laughs> you know, we try to stay away from opinions and and, um, and and things taught that don't line up with the word. Um, so, you know, I think that's the that's the best way to grow and the fastest way to grow when you stay scriptural, when you stay in the word, because come on, that's what the spirit brings to our remembrance. That's how the spirit convicts us. Uh, with his word according to his truth amen so i hope to see you guys soon love y'all y'all have a good day take care a good night a good night yes yeah, eight o'clock i gotta go it's eight o'clock <laughs> love you guys take care <laughs>